Hello, my name is Fraser Simons. This is my channel, Springboard Thought. Today I'm doing an original tag, which I'm sure is not so original, but I might as well make it a tag because I want to see other people doing this kind of thing. I think it'd be fun. Um, this is the influency tag, meaning that I'm simply going to be talking about the books in my possession, physical books, um, that I have purchased directly because of what I've seen uh, from other people's content influencing me. And I'm going from least amount of purchases to most just because I thought that would be fun. It's not shade on people that I've only bought one book of theirs or something. As you'll find out actually towards the end, the most influence, I think part of it is that some of these books are more readily available than others. If I can't get it at my local rural library, for instance, or on the Libby app or things like that, my only recourse is to purchase them. And so that's what ends up happening. There's a lot of factors. I invite you not to read into <laughs> any of these things and just take it at face value. The thing I wanted to clarify real quick is just that I'm not trying to vicariously pass on the information that the booktubers um, passed on to me that got me excited about the books and then uh, bought. It was more so to get you to um, click on those links that I was influenced by. You can check out new booktubers if they're new to you or those specific videos and that way if the book is interesting to you then maybe you'll be sold on it in the same video that I had been sold on it as well. Okay? Uh, so the first book is The Iliac Crest. I saw this on Emmy's chan channel which is um, she's a lit student from London, Ontario where I was born and uh, this was her favorite book of last year if i am remembering correctly and on the back it has it says that in the vein of david lynch and ingmar Ber bergman's persona and it's published by feminist press and it's supposedly very queer that's all i need to know <laughs> next is the man who saw everything i saw this on book bully and um all i know about it is that it kind of like blew her mind and it was, I think, one of her top reads as well. So there's a trend with this. Um, I'm not one year yet on BookTube. And so a lot of these have come from people's top 10 top books of last year, you'll notice. Wittgenstein's Mistress. This is, you'll probably have guessed, Noah from uh, Those Who Read It Must Converse. I don't know anything about this. All I know is something something postmodern. <laughs> Brian from Bookish, American Hippo. I listened. I was able to nab a copy eventually when it went on sale around Christmas time. Very excited to get to this. Um, Gailey has done Magic for Liars previously, which I talked about on this channel, and then Brian messaged me and said, has you tried American Hippo? And it, I was very intrigued and hadn't even heard of it before. So I'm very excited. I don't know anything about it at all except that Brian thinks it's good, and Cowboys and Hippos, Wild West, I like Gailey already, so. This is Courtney Farrader, Antiquities. Uh, she didn't, I think, specifically talk about this, but she really likes this author very much. Uh, Remembered Reads, Jen. This was one of her top reads as well. Luckily found this wildly uh, in a bargain bin as well. And I don't know anything about this either, but it looks vaguely <laughs> postmodern, but I'm not sure. I'm guessing, based on um, Jen's taste, that this bleeds the line between nonfiction and fiction or something like that. A very special book dedicated to people who believe in the power and beauty of life in the face of death. So, see, this is why you don't read the back. Uh, Private Memoirs and Confessions of a Justified Sinner, uh, Sebastian at Apocalypse Reading. This looks fantastic, and I mean, the cover's Red Dragon, so it's gonna be good. Um, I believe this is also postmodern, vaguely horror vibes. That's all I know about it. Sorrow and Bliss. This is from, oh geez, Claire Reads, I believe is the channel's name. And she was talking about this before it was nominated on any uh, prize list. I'm pretty sure it's top reads may not be like top 21 but 
it was a video specifically when she mentioned that this book like really moved her and she talks very much about like um very thoughtful pieces and like I think she's the one that always talks about like the Balkans and translated literature and stuff and I think she was going through a slump maybe and then hit this and just yeah was really moved so and now since then I've seen uh, polarizing <laughs> opinions on this so it'll be interesting to get to. The Eric Carl Anderson Asylum Road this was a top book I'm fairly certain it's weird because it's like a year old and it's like yellowed already so I don't know what was happening with that. Um, I know it's dark and I know that it's uh, very sad and that is enough for me. Okay so this next one this is uh, from Marcy or Macy's I think it's Marcy's Reads, but she likened this to Donna Tartt, and quite frankly, that's all I needed. <laughs> um, she said the writing, I believe the prose work, was like Donna Tartt. I'm not sure if the overall novel feels like a Tartt book, but even if just the prose are like that, that's, yeah, fine with me. Beating Around the Books, The Unfortunates. This is one of the first books that I saw her speak about. This is the one where you open it up and you can kind of choose your own adventure. You can read it in whatever order except for the front and the back stories, the first and the last chapters essentially, and then get a new whole experience type deal. So I'm very excited about this. These two, The Vegetarian and the Lightness, Shaylin writes. Um, she might be London, Ontario as well. She's Canadian for sure anyway. Um, vegetarian, I've Heard is kind of like surrealistic unhinged type deal and then the lightness is she mentioned in her unhinged women video next we're on to scott and nell top books before my actual heart breaks all i know is it delivers on the title it's very sad <laughs> this similarly i think just delivers on the title feminist retelling dracula from the bride's perspective this was a scott pick as well and then this is a nail pick salt water which I think was maybe her all-time favorite one last year not particularly sure um, like with a lot of these like I was saying before in my previous video I can't describe them because all I wanted was the enthusiasm <laughs> and whatever they articulated about it prompted me to get it but then I pick them up specifically when I don't remember anything about them. So a lot of these are getting close. <laughs> Next, Snowflake, which I'm, I believe is just like incredibly sad, um, lots of interiority, good prose, yes, uh, very sad, historical fiction about Balkans. This, I'm pretty sure, is intersectional with Claire Reads or somebody else like Claire Reads, but when I did a search for it, the only video I seem to have watched is one with um, Anna Wallace talking about it. And she was sent it by somebody else, Katie Books, I think, who I didn't see talk about it. But either way, it's been around. So it's definitely a shared influency spot. Next is Sean the Book Maniac and a versus, a rare versus competition with Mark Nash because one of them loved it, one of them did not like it, I believe. Mark Nash said it didn't work for him. Sean the Book Maniac said it was amazing, I think. Pretty sure. Then Potiki by, uh, this is also influenced by Sean the Book Maniac, which is Maori historical fiction. And I think like a modern classic, essentially. And Gun Island I saw on one of the bite-sized book chats. And it is cli-fi, um, climate fiction, eco-fiction, um, and that's pretty much all I know about it, I think. I also have another from Sean the Book Maniac, but I can't find it. It's like Seasons of the Sun or something like that, and it's African, South African lit. I took it with me to put it here. The pile fell, I stacked it again, can't find it. But so technically, Sean has four. Next is Scaladangeling About the Books. Roz, Clarice Lispector, Clarice Lispector, 
posthumous memoirs. She was the one that kind of pushed me a little bit when she talked glowingly about it. Postmodernism, I think it's supposed to be like fairly funny as well. A little bit of dark humor. Don't know anything about the Spectres. Don't need to. Next is Travel Through Stories. This one was quite cheap because you could tell it's like all beat up and stuff. Him and uh, Mark Nash has a he and Mark Nash have a propensity of recommending things that my library doesn't have. So I end up getting kind of beat up copies generally. Head in Flames, I know this is polyphonic, uh, really dark about a um, terrorist, I believe, hearing a bunch of voices in the head all coming together. And this I'm very excited for, postmodern and surrealistic, seems very like wild and having to do with like I think um, art history to some degree as well. I can't remember too much, so it should be time to pick it up soon. But I was very excited about this one. Next, before I have the final two, I wanted to do some community ones, I guess, where I just hear about these books everywhere and ended up picking them up. So Anne of Green Gables, I think goes without saying, but I see this all of the time on booktube. Tin Man, I see about all of the time on booktube. Eric Carl Anderson, uh, Bob the Book Maniac, I'm, Mark Nash, I'm pretty sure everybody glows about this book, so this will be a soon. This was a last year favorite for a lot of people on this one, but I couldn't remember exactly, but I remember a lot of people talked about the performance, all of them positively. And then finally, The Appeal, which I'm very excited about. Murder Mystery, where you kind of are the sleuth you're going through emails and different uh, artifacts of a case and trying to put together it yourself apparently and a whole bunch of people talk positively about this so the last two are bob the book <laughs> runner up is bob the booker <laughs> that book the maniac <laughs> bob the booker um i know this is very queer um interiority and i love the cover if you look close enough. It's men revolving around each other like flowers. Um, and Mark Nash talked about this positively as well, I think. Another intersection with Mark Nash, Chroma, a classic. I think Mark Nash was higher on this than Bob the Booker, but I'm not positive. Um, and I've wanted to get this for years actually, but got a little push. Tell Me I'm Worthless, Queer Horror, um, by a trans person, I believe. Queer Horror, <laughs> Boy Parts. And then Bob recently talked about this. I think he got it as an arc. At certain points we touch. And I don't remember much about this. I just remember that he really liked it. Something about it got me. Probably sad interiority. That's my thing. But number one person who influenced me may come as no surprise, Mark Nash. This is the sort of quintessential Mark Nash book, I think, too, right? In a lot of videos, he's, he's um, got this up. This is not a novel, and this is him being very postmodern, <laughs> essentially, is what I recall of it. We recently read um, a Gaddis JR, and in conversation directly with that is uh, Agape Agape. I love Dick. A Dictionary of the Khazars. The first book of the Zodiac uh, Motorcycle Spirit. Motor Spirit. <laughs> and then there's the follow-up where he tells you who the, the killer actually is. I got just this one initially because I hadn't read Ada yet, which is uh, also from Mark Nash. And, uh, or the influence of Mark Nash, obviously. And um, so I just wanted to sort of try him out first um, before committing to both, like the duology, I guess. But after Ad, I'm, I'm fairly confident I'm going to love it. A clever uh, detective story, the face of the cutting room floor, which kind of, as I understand it, um, interrogates the genre itself and has sort of like a flip side on the... Um, near end of the book or something like that. It shifts into something completely different 
I'm about that. Another detective type thing, 53 days, source prec. Um, very excited to get to this as well. Transcript. Um, I don't know much about this. I believe it's presented as an actual document, non-fiction documents to tell a certain story about the Holocaust possibly. And then another detective thing uh, in the Lake of the Woods, which I ended up getting for free because they said it was like new and it is beat right up. Um, so they refunded my money. And that's it. So if you want to see more, let me know in the comments and I have some in the back <laughs> that I can pull out. I mean, I didn't even go into audiobooks. I didn't go into um, what I've gotten from my library. When I review books currently, I try to mention if somebody has influenced me in getting it in the first place and maybe put their review below. Um, yeah, so let me know. Hope you like the tag. As for tagging other people, I'm just gonna say anyone who sees this is free to do the tag because it feels like it might be out of people's comfort zone to divulge this kind of information or rank them as I have or, or whatever. So I don't want to put any undue pressure on it. It was just going to do a, a regular video on it initially and then decided to do an impromptu tag of it anyhow. Because if people wanted to talk about this stuff, I'd be very curious to know who has, you know, influenced you the most. Otherwise, I'll see you next video.